Hey folks, and in this video, I'm simply going to tell you why PHP is awesome and why you should really be using it for your web development needs. Then afterwards, I'm going to tear into both Node.js and Python, but just a little bit. The uh, reason for this video is twofold. One is I found myself having repetitive consultations with potentials and clearing up the various misconceptions they have regarding modern day PHP. And then second, I just wanted to do more of an inf informal video to help me get comfortable behind the camera. This whole talking to my computer thing is still kind of foreign to me. Anyway, my name is Matt, core maintainer of Apex. I do loads of short and to the point videos regarding all things PHP in general with a focus on Apex. If that by chance interests you, please make sure to like and subscribe. And before we begin, a huge shout out to DigitalOcean for sponsoring Apex through its open source program. That was simply awesome of you guys. If you're ever in need of world-class cloud hosting, please make sure to use DigitalOcean. They are simply the best out there. With that out of the way, let's jump right into the video, and I will tell you why PHP kicks ass for web development and is by far the superior choice for your development needs. And for the elephant in the room, if you're coming from another language, please know that PHP is not WordPress at all. Over the years, PHP has diverged so far from WordPress, you can't really even equate the two anymore. Like, technically, WordPress does still run through the PHP interpreter, but that's pretty much the only thing it has in common with modern-day PHP. I'll give you an example. There's only two types of work I refuse. Crypto trading bots and WordPress sites. Other than that, I take anything and everything. WordPress just simply isn't worth it for me, and I'm a PHP developer, so that should tell you something. Ever since the release of PHP version 8.0 back in November 2020, it's become a truly excellent language that supports all the various different paradigms that you would expect in a fully featured enterprise level language. Us PHP developers have loads of cool goodies to work with, including but not limited to a strict type hinting system, constructor property promotion, name based arguments, match expression, enums, read only properties, union types, intersecting types, no coalescing, first class functions attributes, GIT compiler, preloading, and much, much more. That's just a few. PHP is also fast, really fast, far faster than Python. It's also verbose, but not overly verbose. By that I mean it's verbose enough that developers can generally read each other's code with relative ease, but it's not so verbose that we're writing a bunch of boilerplate code that is useless, such as Java does. Async is also not an issue if that's what you need. We have loads of tools for that, including Swole, React PHP, AMP, and more. All in all, PHP is now an excellent language and it can handle any business of any scale, size, or scope. Another great thing about PHP is the FIG, the Framework Interoperability Group. And what they've done is they've created a set of PSR standards throughout the PHP ecosystem. So you can basically think, you know, ISO, the International Standards Organization, Things like that, but for the PHP ecosystem. So there's various standards out there throughout that are industry-wide, which we all adhere to. And they cover various different aspects of the development, such as logging, caching, how to handle HTTP requests, auto-loading, containers, and more. Now what this does is it makes it really easy for us developers to jump from project to project. For example, if I jump into a project and I can see it supports PSR 7 and 15, then I already know exactly how it handles HTTP requests without even looking at the code. Most other languages just simply don't have this type of standards. Instead, there's popular packages that everyone knows, but there is no actual standards in place within the industry like PHP does. We also have Packages and Composer, which is an excellent repository filled with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different user-created packages that we can easily pull into our projects comprising of uh, pretty much any and all functionality you can think of. Although many may disagree with me, the PHP industry itself has quite a bit of uniformity to it. Uh, within the JavaScript industry, everyone's kind of doing their own thing and on their own, whereas within PHP, we tend to stick to a certain set of standards. I mean, we know what good code is. If somebody comes up with bad code, we're going to tell them in order to correct their mistakes. That's simply how PHP industry works, which is a great thing because it provides uniformity and ensures quality. And enough about PHP, let's move on to the other two main web development languages, Python and Node.js. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Python. I find myself using it more and more in my daily work and it's an all around great language. Well, except Django REST framework, the hell's that about? 
Oh, and actually while I'm here, Python developers, one thing. This isn't all of you, just some of you. Just because Python makes it possible for you to condense 20 lines of code into one doesn't mean you should actually do that. Like, please don't do that. It makes it really difficult to read. Stop that. Stop it. Get some help. I know loads of people out there say Python is an excellent first language to learn, but I have to disagree. Simply because it's missing out support for various different, very fundamental paradigms that exist in other languages. For example, type hinting. Yes, there is type hinting in Python. It's not strictly enforced and it's not widely used. And type hinting is important. We need that. Another one is there's no native support for interfaces or abstract classes. Yes, I know there's workarounds for this, but there is no native support for them. And again, fundamental paradigms. Another one is dependency injection. Yes, it's technically possible in Python, but it's not nice and it is not widely used. And that's for PHP systems at least, dependency injection is a very important aspect of our development. So all around Python is an excellent language, but it's simply missing those fundamental paradigms that pretty much every other language out there has. And next we have Node.js. Now I'll admit, I don't have a huge amount of experience with Node, but I have enough that I've played around with it. Plus, lately I find myself picking up quite a bit more Ethereum and smart contract work, which puts me into Node as well. Nonetheless, a few red flags here. First, the elephant in the room. What the hell is with this whole restarting your server every time you modify the code thing? Yes, I know there's automated workarounds for this, but still. Then again, I'm still quite perplexed as to why JavaScript is even a backend language to begin with, so who knows. Anyway, the main concern I have with Node is the versioning and dependencies. Um, Node is currently 12 years old and it is on version 16. PHP on the other hand is 28 years old and is on version 8. Node versions move much quicker than PHP. Now combine this with the fact that a Node dependency is about 5% the size of a PHP dependency. So for example, with a, mid, with a mid sized PHP system, you can have maybe 80 to 120 dependencies, which is about normal. With, and in Node, that translates into about 2,300 different dependencies. Now combine that with the versioning system and you have you know over 2,000 dependencies that are all written in different versions of Node and it's just an absolute nightmare to manage a project like that. That's my main red flag with Node, and on top of that is the fact that Ryan Dahl, the creator of Node, isn't even very happy with the language. Right. Using Node is uh, kind of like nails on chalkboard to me at, at times, just because um, I see the bugs that I introduced that aren't really bugs at this point, they're just how it works, but they are bugs, um, and they were design mistakes made that just cannot be corrected now because there's so much software that uses it. Um, and it's, it's uh, I don't know, it offends my sensibilities. Uh, it could have been much nicer. So if the creator of Node doesn't even like Node anymore, then why would I ever entrust that language with my clients' businesses? I mean, this is people's livelihoods we're talking about here. Nonetheless, I think that wraps it up and gives my reasoning as to why I believe PHP is by far the superior choice for your web development needs. So I'll leave it there. Nonetheless, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. If you by chance enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe as I have a whole lot more in the pipeline. See you in the next video.